Tuner here with Michael Vincent, the dude. Hey, good afternoon, everybody, from uh, the Heart of Freight Alley, my friend. A little hey, bit I'm, rainy. I'm, I'm pretty excited because we have a, uh, a mystery box. What's that's, in the box? What's in the box? What's it's not Gwyneth Paltrow's head. It's something or other. We don't know what it is. Our guest uh, who's in studio, he's going to be up here in about 10 minutes. We yeah. promised we wouldn't open it until he got up here. Uh, I'm excited, though. What does it I'm sound like? I'm kind of like? excited myself. It didn't meow. It's not living. It doesn't do anything. It's not living. Aunt Bethany. Not living hey, by the way, how was, uh, how was Gatlinburg? Dude, it was sweet. We went up there to Dollywood Splash Country with the kids yesterday, just a day vacation thing. It was awesome. It was even, it was so perfect that we actually had like a 45 minute rainstorm, like mid afternoon that just cleared out like over half the park. So the rest of the day was just sprinting up there. It was just, as fast as you get to the top of the slides, you could roll. Now, what was, was like the cool. best uh, like ride or slide, I suppose? The best one, I'm gonna tell you what, that that one was fun. That right there is the best one right there. It's it's like a, uh, like a water tower type of thing, but it's yeah. a kid's thing, but the... the... <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's indoors somewhere, I don't know what that is. Oh, Look at that, there are you, you go. okay? Oh, hey. Dancing off with your body right there. <laughs> I didn't know you guys were following me around all day. <laughs> That's interesting, man. Are you, are you a lazy river guy? I, but the kids are, my wife is, so I am. I mean, it's all right, you yeah. know, hanging out in those types. So I'll tell you what, the, it, the music was interesting because there they, like, try and appease everybody. Yeah. So it goes from, from like, a, a vintage Dolly, uh, uh, you know, um, a Dolly Parton yeah. to ACDC. Huh. And then a little bit of the Hokey Pokey. Yeah. And then you might get some Ozzy Osbourne or Cream after that. Wow. <laughs> Any, like, Megan the, Stall the Stallion? You, what's that? Any, like, Megan, anything, like, that's been made in the past 25 years? No, no, nothing like that. <laughs> it's nothing just, like. just the oldies. as well. <laughs> A lot going on on today's show. Problem, you want to study space and send cargo up there, but the rocket ship in your barn has about as much lift as Michael Vincent giving a jumping high five. Solution, space rideshare with NASA's CubeSats. These things are wicked cool. We're going to have NASA on today. This is a NASA episode. They're going to tell us about these uh, satellites that you can launch up. You can almost use that as, as a rideshare. And what's really cool about this concept is you look at satellites now, but you can also yeah. see the prospect of using NASA or other space carriers carriers to bring goods up into space as that economy grows. And I love uh, you heard in that ships bill, you know what got funded? No. Artemis? And uh, and uh, the mission of the well, Artemis is the mission to uh yeah, yeah, to, yeah. To, to all the way to Mars. But, right. And also the, the mission to the moon. That's, oh, okay. Those are both Which is part app. of it as a step, right? Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Really I'm cool. glad that got fun. Great day to be talking to, uh, to NASA. We were going to talk a little bit about automobile, cross-border, learn about what Universal Logistics Service does with mm. uh, Carlos Barona. And we got Netrodyne's Nick Grome. He's going to share the latest in dash cam tech. Uh, Owner-operators, they say that they'll make far less this year. Hershey's Halloween candy shortage for Halloween. What? Dang, man. And the That's worst stocks cool. in America. A lot of stuff to get to. But before we do, let's tip the band. Do it. Did you know that AIT Worldwide Logistics is one of the fastest growing forwarders out there? They grew by 400% over the past five years, earning a spot on Crane Chicago Fast 50 list. But how do they do it? By earning their customers' trust with cost-effective, customized supply chain solutions. Find out how your business can benefit when you visit. Tell them, dude. Hey, go to AITWorldwide.com immediately after this show. All right, headlines. The vast majority of owner operators, owner operators say they'll make less money. That's what the survey says. To get a clear mm. picture of how the world looks now, Freightways Research went out and they asked a bunch of owner operators, what is going on? We did this survey between May and June. Here's the results. Let's look at the first chart here. The first one says, on a scale of one to 10, please rate your expectations for profitability this year when compared to 2021. Um, one is bad. One, if you're for yeah. the audio viewers, one right here is the highest by far. It was almost 35% uh, of drivers who anticipated earning less. When you go to 10, 0% thought they would make more. Uh, about, I don't know, what does that look like? You like 3% or in the nine? Where get, for nine, yeah, maybe yeah, you one, two percent. 5% at eight, yeah. seven for 10. In the middle, you get at 15%, and that's the like second highest category. So by and large, most owner operators don't think they're uh, they're going to have some trouble this year. Oh, yeah, they're going to have some problems. And those are, you know, now, the ones that are going to make more, maybe they just got in business. Maybe they didn't even drive. Well, what's impacting? Uh, who knows? So here's the things that are impacting. We got this chart over here. So they rank those things by... Uh, uh, yeah, it's important of what's going to impact them. The rising fuel costs was sure. number one out there, almost a number five. Makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah. Rate volatility was number two. Availability of loads was a three. Yeah. Uh, and then tolls and traffic were down there near the bottom. 
Yeah, but, I mean, like, yeah. who would, like in 2020, who would care about like tolls? Like tolls. Well, tolls, tolls didn't driving your, go up significantly. Well. There wasn't more traffic, was there? I, well, there was more traffic than the year before, I guess, because of you know people weren't driving to work and stuff like well, let's that. Take, we haven't taken a look at the drive and spot market no. in a bit. Let's take a look at this sonar chart, and I'll tell you the reason why we haven't really been talking that much about it is because look at that dead donkey on top of it it this hasn't done look at this thing it, it's been like a healthy heartbeat since may right <laughs> yeah, but that's the, right. i mean not we may not healthy because it's been kind of like averaging around a dollar 99 every time it gets over two it falls right back down during the week the only good news here is that steady systematic decline that started at the beginning of the year it's at least leveled off and if we can stay here there's hope that fall peak season could bring rates back up for carriers right? it could and, and you know what's needed because you know what's not adjusted in there is inflation and inflation yeah. At nine percent and ten percent, that's a lot worse than no, it I looks, know. right? It, it's faller, but I mean, all I yeah. but all I mean by that is at least we at least have at some least sort of it's not stability. dropping more. Yeah, I get As it. Anyone knows, like, when you. you run a business, knowing your cost expectations are, yes. are a huge part of it. And in freight, we fail at that so many times because it's a it's a feast or famine <laughs> type of business, is it not? It, it, it absolutely is, and the thing is, like right now, is when you need that data as much as possible. You need to be studying what's going on because finding those opportunities is much more difficult. By the way, here's a, here's a news story that um, after we talk about this, I, we we'll probably ask uh, Carlos about that too because he might have an opinion. He or might two have on an opinion. Well, big <laughs> EV tax credits and incentives could be coming, right? How does yeah. that BEV semi look right now? Well, if you get one that's manufactured in North America, yeah. like something like, well, some the Tesla Semi doesn't really exist, but like perhaps you got like a, I don't know, would a Nikola qualify? They make those, I've got, I've got no. overseas. They're Maybe made overseas. Those are, right? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe if they put Let's all these- Let's just call it. It's American, here. North American companies. So Either way, you're going to get a $40,000 tax credit on your EV semi-truck. On top of that, there's yeah. all sorts of bonuses made for just buying an EV vehicle in general and even selling EV vehicles used. This, uh, this- this particular bill, if it goes through, would run all the way to 2032. Its intent is to really build out the proliferation of EVs. Now, we know right now this seems a little suspect. It's like, let's increase a ton of demand. But if you go out and try and get an EV right now, it's a pain. Like, we're trying to get an EV, uh, yeah. you know, the coolest car on the road, an EV minivan. Oh, yeah. Can't no find them anywhere, man. An electric vin minivan, too. Electric minivan. Can't find them anywhere right now. Styling with one of those things right there. Another interesting part of this, and I wonder if Elon, like I was reading some speculation online from yeah. some smart people, and they were talking about how the union credit got removed, the one that favored Ford and yeah. GM and yeah, excluded yeah, 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 yeah. Musk. But what do you think he gave up for that? A lot of people are speculating online that in order to get that, he had to open up, he's going to have to open up the chargers to all EVs. And, and maybe he did that, but, uh, you know, he seems to me like maybe he was holding that close to the vest and then played that card because uh, he, he's always br uh, put forth the notion that he's here to, to, like, move society forward, right? And maybe that's one of those plays. I think it's good, and he probably did have to give something up like that. I think it's actually a good play. Well, I think it is. So, yeah, I, th I think that if we are want to be realistic, there has to be like a little bit of altruism in these EV companies, especially the ones that be. are making chargers and the manufacturers of uh, homogenizing how things charge so we don't have mass confusion like that would be the worst thing for that yeah, can you imagine walking around with swag from like a, a convention that has different charger adapters for your yeah. car <laughs> i mean it's like owning a couple different cell phones right and <laughs> yeah, apple comes along and makes lightning and it's like this doesn't use use usb-c like a normal person yeah exactly they don't do well our guest <laughs> in the studio is sitting very patiently come on up carlos <laughs> Thank you for coming down to uh, the studio. This is the first, the first test is you getting on on this thing without breaking your neck. I'll do my best. Uh, <laughs> we'll keep an eye on the uh, the ramp there. That's why I'm short. You know, I, I can. You're looking so You did that on purpose? I, I did it on purpose. Uh -huh. <laughs> on, on command. <laughs> now, before we exchange gifts and everything, because I have some for you too. I have, an, I have a brand new what the truck hat. The wow. brand new shirt for you. Beautiful. I picked a I, I picked a large, but maybe you need a medium. I don't know. I'll say I'll say probably a medium. Yeah. A medium. Yeah, okay. Well, a medium will do. Okay. Yeah. We'll exchange that for a, a medium later. Excellent. <laughs> All right. You can, give the, you can keep the large. You can give it to someone in your your company. Well, someone's a little beefy. Well, we'll, we'll do so, we'll do a raffle. Or when you command yourself to be larger, you could just wear it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's nice. Introduce yourself to everybody. What brings you down to Chattanooga? Well, you know, I I I, I was strolling by, and uh, I figure it would be great to 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 meet you guys. Uh, you know, obviously introduce my company as well, uh, Universal. Logistics Services. Cool. We've been in business since uh, 2000, yeah. and uh, we started in the food and beverage industry. That was the main thing. Uh, our geographical location being in Birmingham, Alabama, yeah. made sense to make a turn into the automotive industry. Yeah. And we've grown tremendously, 800% um, in the last eight years. Wow. And, wow. Uh, yeah. So we're a mix of uh, asset-based brokerage as well, and um, 
you know, it's just kind of exploded. Uh, we've been blessed with, with, with great success so far. And uh, the main thing, what we do is we're a smaller company, but we have Fortune 500 solutions for our customers. Ooh. So they love the fact that we have a Southern hospitality, you know, sort of speak uh, approach to it. And bless uh, your heart. exactly, bless your heart, <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, your baby, your sweetheart, your honey, uh, and uh, you know, in different languages, you know, and we do business in Canada and Mexico, and and uh, yeah, so we're we're able to to really provide solutions for our, for yeah, our customers. So y'all are doing it right out there. That's right, exactly. <laughs> when you're on the automotive side, right? That is correct. What is that space like right now? Because we all know if you're out there, like we were talking about this chips thing, like right. I'm trying to get a new family car, and it's been a real challenge. It has. It's been, been a challenge in both the used and the the new market I would say the new market because the new market is actually a better value than the used market right now absolutely because of the massive inflation but it's hard to get the car you want it really is and and you know there are waiting times and, and we've seen that you know production sh challenges in so many different ways since COVID uh, and uh, it just keeps it's one thing after another uh, I, I believe that it's gonna get much better and you know Maybe not in this month, next month, but but in the next few months, it's sort of picking up again. Um, and, and the reason is because people want their cars. I yeah. mean, there's the demand is out there, and uh, and and we really have to, you know, we're doing our job to to push the industry to give those the finished product to to the customer. So. Um, I, it's a, it's a pain in the butt right now, yeah. and, and you know I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to get rid of my 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 old car right now. But uh, well, I, those incentives that that building just yeah. passed, they've yeah, made, yeah, yeah. they've suddenly made EVs really attractive by exactly renewing yeah. all that stuff. I think you can get almost seventy five hundred bucks on an EV car. So if you want something like the Cyber Truck that was maybe fifty five thousand, or like the, well the Fords have been marked up so much, like they were they were supposed to be like forty, but they're like ninety thousand if you go into correct. The and it's tempting, right? Yeah, absolutely it, tempting. It, what it do you think this will do to the market? Like th this this credit if it goes through. Well, I think it's definitely a huge incentive. The problem is the infrastructure, right? So yeah. if, if I want to go from Birmingham down to the beach, uh, is the infrastructure there for me to be able to, to make it all the way without having to, you know, that, that's the biggest thing I, I, I'm seeing. Yeah. That could be the challenge. Yeah, you know, I, I, when I look at them there, if they got like 300 miles or 350 mile range and then you got right. to charge, that's pretty cool for me. I mean, oh, you know, I want to go, go about that far and I'm going to take a break for lunch or whatever it happens to be anyways, right? right. And my kids are going to want to go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's say, the thing. Kids, we're going to go to the hunter right. or whatever it happens to be. But the, the incentives, all the different tags that are on there, will it be available to like all EVs? Because there's different things. Like are the batteries recyclable or whatever? There's all kinds of different things in there. Is that on the automaker to but make yeah. sure that that's there, right? I would think it would be. Yeah. Um, I, I would guess. And, yeah. and again, and, and it's going to be different markets, right? Like if you live in the city, it makes perfect sense. Sure. Right? You know, there's sure. there plenty of infrastructure for you to recharge your car around. But what do you do for a living, right? Yeah. And that's when yeah. the semis, that, that's the big question. You know, yeah. do we have the infrastructure for these guys to be able to make it work? I saw Rivian out in the wild uh, about a week ago in Hicks and, Pen uh, Hicks and Tennessee, right down yeah. the road here. I mean, we just talked wild. to the port of, port of Baltimore, and they're like, right. it's early innings on this stuff. They're like, yeah, we have one, and we don't even have a charger yet. We're thinking of, like, yeah. where to put the charger in, how much time this would exactly. use, and then what it means when you scale it. And does it make more sense to create a charging network at a, uh, a, 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 a EV consolidation or sort of DC center or putting them directly on the port? And that's where a lot of these places are. Right now, right. but the unfortunate thing is in California, you got to get clean by the end of the year. That is, I think that's pushing it, right? And, yeah. uh, you know, big challenge for those guys out there. Uh, luckily in the South, I think we have a little bit more time, but uh, it, eventually it's going to go that way, right? And, yeah. and, it, yeah. and it's just, I, I feel like it's inevitable. Uh, hopefully it'll be for the better, uh, but it will take some time in my opinion. Yeah, I, so so what do you think about the the, the, the compete, competition like uh, Duner and I were talking about and making everything, you know, standardized, right? So Elon gives up the charging stations and makes sure that everybody can use them. They're agnostic, right? right. You got Volvo doing that out in in california as well for the large uh, large trucks out there making truck agnostic uh type of stuff there that's important for the development and the infrastructure right without a doubt yes yeah. no, so uh, uh, again in my opinion it's, yeah. it's just it's a, it's a tough you know that that's why these guys are making the big bucks out there and uh, <laughs> you know figuring it out for us but uh it, it's going to move that direction it we're going to have to move with it, unfortunately, or, or fortunately, if, if, if you're looking for an environment, right? Well, in your so. space, what has been the most challenging thing for for you or your customers? Has it? I mean, last year, the big thing was capacity and rates. This year, it's right. a little bit a little bit different. A lot of times, it's availability of goods, right? Mm -hmm. Well, correct. And, and, and you guys are seeing the spot market, what it's doing right now. Yeah. It's, it's, we've seen the correction, right? And, yeah. and, and we hope it's just the correction and it's not just continues to go on a downtrend. Yeah. Uh, but, but yes, it, it is the manufacturing of certain goods that are, that are preventing the final, you know, the final production uh, to take place. Mm -hmm. and, and that is the biggest thing we're seeing. Uh, 
at, again, it's, it's there's so many different pieces that yeah. gotta gotta be together at the same time. And uh, I mean, two potential big wins though for for automotive and EV with the Chips Act and the the EV uh, credit bill that they're they're looking at. I right. mean that it's going to take a while, obviously, to build those chip factories and everything. Will, but at least it would prevent us from getting in this situation that we're in again. And as cars require, as especially as electric cars, auton as autonomous vehicles, they require more and more of these chips. Where we why not have this short on our own shorts? W without a doubt, I, and I think it's a huge long term solution, right? Uh, because again, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And, and we had to learn the hard way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but well, we are taking the right steps, in my opinion, you know, to prevent this from happening again and, and having a more stable market, uh, you know, not only for, for, you know, for the automotive industry, but every, every industry out there. Yeah, I don't see how you can necessarily oppose the the Chips Act either. Like, it's it's it looks pretty bipartisan to me. It's something that right. I think we've all been screaming. Let's reshore some of our stuff. Let's, and especially from a national security perspective, when you look at China and what they're saying about what like yeah. Hawaii was yeah. doing with the spying and and, and all that. Like, yeah. why not just have it? Let our well, own corporations spy yeah. on us. That that's let Mark Zuckerberg yeah. spy well, on you know, us. Chinese. A second part to that is, is for, especially for the EVs, is is the batteries, right? The rare earth minerals. Right. Which used to be the largest was was over there just west of Vegas, and now it's like eighty five percent out in China. That needs to come back on shore as well, right? Without, without a doubt. I mean, and that's something we all can agree on. Uh, that you know, made in America is much better, obviously, yeah. for everybody. Uh, but you know, th th that's what we're supporting. And, and, and for us, you know, uh, doing business in Mexico and Canada, it's a North America thing business. Yeah. Right? Has, have you seen things change as, as, you know, there's different manufacturing coming back on board or was it just, is, does it affect the automotive as, that it, much? It really hasn't uh, because yeah. it's staying within this side of the world. It's been so staying it's, here anyways, right? Exactly, yeah. correct. So, so that's actually a positive for us, you know, that we're yeah. able to, to add value to our customers on this side of the globe, for sure. Gotcha, gotcha, so. gotcha, gotcha. We open some gifts over here? I, I think you guys got it, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm so, really curious. Yeah, just open it on that right, side. So I'll stay over any, here. Do you have like a preamble, a precursor before I open this, or should I just dive right in? No, yeah, just, just go for it, right just All go right. for it. I, I think I think you guys will really enjoy this one. <laughs> All right. It was very taped. <laughs> it's very taped. They did a good job packaging. Hey, uh... We, we delivered on time. So do you have that family member that doesn't want to actually tear the Christmas wrapping and tries to save it and fold it and all that oh. kind of stuff? No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> they've even got the gift bags, haven't they? They no, take we, like we, a half hour they, to open a present. They're, 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 they're big time on, on, on oh, presents. Yeah. Yeah. They just tear oh, the stuff up. <laughs> they, oh, yeah, they take joy, yeah. Let's get that box. We got bubble here. wrap, folks. Yeah, you can That's pop. The yeah, bubble wrap is for this, me. This keeps you in That's for me. Holy, look at this. Look at this. Don't use the S word. Look at this stuff. Holy mackerel! Check this out. Wow. So, what? Get a zoom on that man. Get that the hero shot. So, Here, I'm just gonna hold on. I'm just gonna walk this right up. To walk it up. I'm gonna you walk it to. right up. That's badass, dude. And I'll tell you guys a story on this. Uh, <laughs> All right, what's the story on it, man? Sto story on it. Um, one of the owners of our company said Mississippi State alum. Oh, uh, okay. And. and uh, I don't know if you guys know anything. Oh, yeah, about absolutely. The cowbells you know, in Mississippi State. Cowbells are it's a yeah, thing. They uh, tried to outlaw them. That's right. right. It, those things are so loud. This is called a battle bell. It's a battle bell. It's a battle Mississippi bell. Mississippi State battle bell. Exactly. And so, uh, yeah, they so, tried to do away with it like the Vuvuzela or Vuvuzela or whatever. Yeah, the Vuvuzela, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tried to get rid of the Vuvuzela. Those things are loud. And, uh, and, and yeah, so the company Battle Bell, yeah. you know, I thought, man, these guys need their own. Why the truck engraved wow. Battle Bell, right? And uh, I messaged the guys, I said, look, I'm gonna be in this podcast. Can you yeah. have it done, you know, by the day, of, by Friday? So okay. you guys and, gonna play dueling bells let's here? Let's have the news off. You, so you, uh, well, we'll see you can be louder. You use my old one, I'll try and use okay. your okay. new one. Okay, okay, excellent. Oh, I bet you right. win, dude. Oh, yeah. Not even close. Not even Not close. Not even close. Not even close, this thing, this banger it, in here is, is metal. The clapper. It, it really the is. The clapper. So, it, well, it, and the, and the, the, it's a different, uh, it's a different pitch, which just sharpens it, It's a different right pitch, through. which I think you guys need it. Yeah. You know, and uh, I, I don't know, it's, again, made in America, made in Mississippi. Uh, uh, those guys finished it out really fast, and, you know, I was, I, I was quite impressed with the, uh, with the delivery. I mean, that, that, that was, thing's that awesome. Was fast. I love it. The battle. So, I hope though. you guys really like it. I hope you I guys enjoy it. it. I love uh, it. Appreciate it very much. the original one, and, uh, yeah, again, you know, a little bit of a tradition, uh, from our company as well, so, you Wait, know. You, your tradition is giving cowbells on? No, no, no. Oh. So, <laughs> <laughs> wow, what synergy? No, it's now, a battle bell hey, for now Mississippi. Now all the customers are going to start calling me. Yeah, so one of okay. our owners went to Mississippi State. Yeah. 
huge Mississippi State fan, and you know he he rings the bell every once in a while oh. during the office, and and you know I feel I figure you guys needed one. Yeah, so. I love it. Uh, well, hey, the, thank you so much for guys, coming down it's here. It's a pleasure. Thank really you so much for having thank me. Thank you so much, man. It was a pleasure. Next time I'll try to be taller for this. Uh, <laughs> Just uh, command it. Yeah, I'll make it, it so. next time. But don't so forget your parting gift right, right here. I'll, I'll be looking for the schmedium on the way out. Yeah, yeah. That, if you go, if you take a left in there, there may be a schmedium. Excellent, guys. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Guys, thank you, man. Thank you. Take it easy. Good time. Awesome. Wow. Awesome. The battle bell kills, man. You know, they tried to outlaw those. That thing is awesome. I'm going to put Because they're so loud. There. Those, they tried to outlaw those? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because they're so loud in the stadium. You go to Mississippi State for a game and they, you hear the, uh, you know, 70,000 maniacs ringing these? Yeah. Boy, it's a little loud. Yeah. Well, meanwhile. <laughs> these usually don't end up. What's going on here? There's a Tesla. There's this guy. That's oh. a. What the? Uh, that's not turned out well for this game. Oh. Wow. What an idiot. <laughs> wow, was there a need to do that? Watch this Tesla, though. Why, why watch, did he do that? Watch this? how this Tesla oh. performs in that angle. Watch how it speeds up and slows down to avoid that thing. I wonder if that was, like, driver or that was yeah, Tesla. Yeah, that was rage, dude. No, but do you think that Tesla, do you think that was driver, like, the driver was controlling? Those moves almost looked uh, like the AI which took over. On that Tesla, look at how it, look at the defensive yeah. moves it just Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Maybe that's Nick Rome does. Crazy, that, dude. If he had a dash cam on his car, he would see what was going on there. It's Nick Rome, director of sales at Netride. And Nick, that is why you need dash cams on your cars, isn't it? The road is like wild out there. So true, so true. I haven't seen that one, but that's, uh, you know, that's pretty intense. You know, I was looking into your background, speaking of uh, looking up personal data, and I saw that you were a Miami University alumni, which is in my blood as well. My sister went to that school. I also noticed that you went there during the Ben Roethlisberger era. How was, how was that time? I did. It was a lot of fun. It really put us on the map. We got a couple ESPN2 games on, uh, on, yeah. on the map. That was, it was just a lot of fun to watch him play. Fun years. Yeah, that's a big deal. Because you know when they send the ESPN like eight there, they send like the really cheap like you know, four eighty p potato cameras. <laughs> so yeah, 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 ESPN too. You actually get a little nice HD action happening. <laughs> Some guy there with his GoPro <laughs> doing this type of stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, no, I put the whole Mac on 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 the map. Really, sure. that that era did. Wow. It, it absolutely did. Absolutely. And they had like did. Chad Pennington too at a at a Marshall around. Yeah, that's right. Just a little yeah, bit yeah, 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 yeah. Well, hey, those are. Let's not yeah. talk about Mac issues. Let's talk about the uh, yeah. the issues with small and medium sized businesses, especially from your perspective. What uh, yeah. what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, lots of lots of challenges uh, for fleets just in general right now. But um, you know, driver. Driver hiring it continues to be a challenge. So you know we're seeing fleets focus more on retention, um, how you retain your current drivers, and you know how do you implement tools to drive safety, safety culture and safety performance. And then you know nuclear verdicts are top of mind, but you know we're seeing those the rise in, in verdicts also you know increase the, the settlement amounts for small claims too, which are you know, creating more of a financial impact, uh, you know, on the month to month basis. Yeah. So how do, how do companies utilize that technology to kind of, uh, you know, mitigate those uh, risks of the nuclear verdicts? Yeah. So, yeah, at the foremost, it, 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 video telematics can, can help, you know, provide clarity on what, what happened to it, like at a specific event, you know, who's at yeah. fault, you know, what happened at that snapshot. But, you know, today's tech is, is taking it a step further, you know, where, where there's just more data available. So, you know, a fleet manager can, you know, identify a trend over, you know, maybe a last time period of a week or a month to, to proactively, you know, identify what's the root cause of a behavioral trend. How do you get ahead of it before it, you know, turns into something, something bad? Nick, it's no secret that in this industry, uh, retention, recruitment, uh, it's, it's bad, right? It's really, there's a lot of blind spots. There's a lot of failures. Can tech help with that? Can it help close some of those blind spots and, and, and singe those communication gaps that seem to happen that leave a lot of drivers out there on an island? Yeah, absolutely. And, and really, you know, how, how uh, the biggest way to do that is through positive recognition. So you know, the data exists today where you can identify, you know, what a driver is doing well and have a balanced conversation versus, you know, uh, getting called into the principal's office, you know, once a quarter, you know, to tell you what you did wrong. So just, 
injecting positive recognition into it could be as simple as hey you know a pat on the back you know a call out of nowhere to say hey you did this really well keep it up uh you know versus you know having a negative conversation and then really take to take it a step further tie in tie in positive recognition to an incentive program you know that's just really going to drive culture uh you know without it, you know, doing doing a whole lot extra, but just doing more positive recognition. That was a good point too, because it's not just the tech; it's the person behind the tech taking Utilizing in that it. data yeah. and deciding how they're going to coach someone or if they're going to chastise someone, what their approach will be to that. So there's still this big human element to it. Like all tech, it's just a tool. Yeah, a absolutely. And gamification and incentive is is key because a lot of, I mean, a lot of safety issues I would imagine are because somebody's trying to make up time for not making enough money, getting yeah. getting stuff done, right? So incentivizing that really, really helps. In this me too type of culture, you know, you can't just go out there and have something and say, hey, I got, I got one of these too. I can get safety cameras. You guys have drive eye, driver eye platform. Why is this different than other than other cameras? What's different about it? Yeah, it's really it's really about the data. So we're, we're, our platform provides a more complete data set, uh, analyzing the whole day of driving, not just an event here, an event there. So you know we're doing two things. We're going to empower the fleet manager with really the whole picture, so they can they can really make the right decisions and have the right conversations based off a complete data set, which includes positive recognition. But we also want to empower the driver. Uh, you know, w with that real-time data, a, a driver can, you know, they look, look at their own performance and, and uh, you know, see how they're doing over a day, week, or month and really correct themselves, which is a lot different than, you know, a, a manager telling you, you know, what you did wrong. Uh, so it's really just empowering the driver and empowering the fleet, you know, with just, with just a better data set in the whole picture. Nick, before we let you go, I, I have a, a question. Um, over your shoulder, there's a grandfather clock. I was just curious if that still worked. <laughs> not, not yet. No, I, uh, I, I just moved last year, and uh, it was in the house before I bought it. And I was like, hey, could, could I have that? And they're like, sure, uh, you can have it. And it probably, because I don't know what the repair bill is, they're like, oh, yeah, you could, you could handle this. <laughs> I was going to say, because when I was, when I was, when I was like, a little it. kid in the 80s, I remember my parents got, it was, like, really popular to get a grandfather clock. And they got one, but, like, within a year, it broke. Yeah. And then repairing it was, like, in like ridiculously expensive. So it just, it just sat there. It was a decoration. Yeah, don't go the route of putting, like, a digital clock yeah. inside there or something like that. You got to repair the actual work. <laughs> or just let it hang out yeah. there. Yeah. Dash things inside of it. <laughs> Nick, where, sure. hey, Nick, where do people go to connect with you if they had more questions from this interview or they wanted to learn more about uh, driver I or Netrodyne? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, you can, we, we just refreshed our website. So you can, you can reach us at netrodyne.com uh, with a Y. Uh, yeah. And feel free to, we're active on LinkedIn and the, the social platforms as well. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend here. Oh, wait. There's a little loud cowbell for you. <laughs> yeah. Oof, that, that's, uh, that's some serious cowbell right there. That is, I know. <laughs> no, I, I bet the guys in the back controlling the sound love when I shake that thing. <laughs> I bet they do. Hey, do you remember what Vaughn Moore from AIT said last time he was on the show? I do. He I said, absolutely bigger do. bigger isn't better, better is that's better. That's exactly right. Whether it's new offices in India, expanding life science operations in Europe, or acquiring one of the best final mile providers in the U.S., AIT's exponential growth is driven by anticipating and responding to customer needs. Discover how they can help your business gain fast, streamlined access to new markets. Ad, tell them, dude. Go to AITWorldwide.com immediately after this show. History lesson, Michael Vincent. For over 35 years, Fleetworthy Solutions has provided a single source of solutions to help monitor and manage DOT compliance while mitigating risk for private and for hire carriers. With advanced technologies and exceptional client services, Fleetworthy becomes an extension of your team to make your company go beyond, beyond. compliant. All right, let's take a little video. Let's here, let's set the table. A little video here is going to show you what CubeSats do before we talk to NASA. In a world where small satellites could only ride coach, NASA dreamed of first-class tickets for small spacecraft. Today, that dream has become a reality. NASA's first venture-class launch. 
on the Rocket Lab Electron Rocket. The spacecraft of Alana 19 has their first class ticket to space. Roger. So let's bring on some real experts here from NASA cool. to tell us what we just watched. Because to me, that looked like cargo ride sharing in space. Satellites, but still cargo. Right? Yeah, it yeah, absolutely not. did. I, I love the narrative on that thing, though. Well, I also so love the guy out there measuring stuff. You think he's like going to split an atom and he's just putting a sticker on a rock. Oh, yeah, the voice. It was kind of like, like <laughs> a Buzz Lightyear uh, trailer or something. <laughs> well, we got Liam Cheney. He's a mission manager. And Norman Phelps, also a mission manager for NASA's Launch Services Program. Hey, gentlemen, thank you so much for spending a little time with us on a Friday afternoon. Oh, thanks. Uh, no problem. Us. Thank you for having us. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, which one is Liam and which one is Norman? So I am Liam. And, oh, and that would be Norman. Well, yeah, I, was gonna get, I, almost, I was about to guess that he was Norman then. <laughs> where, where does, uh, so where does the NASA, we've spoken to a lot of different NASA offices, a lot of them out of KSC, but we've talked to JPL and a bunch of others. They're all over. Are you over in Florida near Kennedy or where does NASA's launch service program work out of? Liam. You know, that's actually a very good question. And I think you called Liam and I just jumped in there. That's Liam, all right. Take that one? It's okay. <laughs> we'll go for it. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so, yeah, so, um, so we, we are, yeah, we're, we're with uh, Kennedy Space Center. So we're, um, we're the launch services program at Kennedy Space Center. Um, Norman is in Florida. I'm actually a remote worker. So I'm in Kansas City. Oh, um, so I'm in a completely different time zone and everything, but uh, but technically, uh, technically, I'm part of Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Tell the truth. Okay. You're building your own little rockets on a farm in in Kansas City. aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Norman, Norman, how about you? What did we just look at? What are you guys working on over there? That looked like uh, magic to me. It was really cool. Uh, it's not magic. It's science. Right. But um, but yeah, so we're working on a lot of really cool projects. Um, so just to give you guys a little brief kind of overview of what the CubeSat Launch Initiative is, we are basically um, a program or initiative within the National Launch Services Program, who our goal is really to find or really to um, provide launch opportunities for these little small CubeSat developers that they can um, actually go into space, they can actually do their science, and you will be surprised the amount of science that we're actually able to mm -hmm. achieve with this small form factor. An actual CubeSat is only about, you know, uh, four, four and a quarter by four and a quarter by four and a quarter uh, inches, both um, inches cubed. So it's actually a very, very small um, payload normally. That's a one U CubeSat. The images you're kind of showing out there are different size CubeSats. Those are about a six U CubeSats. However, what we do is we provide launch opportunities for these guys, and we actually partner with individuals like you got the Electron right there, Rocket Lab, to actually, you know, get these individuals and these their, their missions into space so they can do all their science that they are that they are both designing to and planning to conduct. And um, you'd be surprised the amount of return that we've been able to get in such a small small uh, platform. That is really really cool. What are those? Like, what are what is what is a nano satellite? What are those cubes? What are they hold? Liam, uh, let's give you a chance. What do they do? One. Yeah, so they're um, they, they you know the original idea with CubeSats was was to develop something that that could be used for education, um, a small satellite that uh, didn't cost a lot to put into space, but uh, you could learn kind of the basic things of communication and and um, com you know com the com the computer system of the satellite, charging power system, and as electronics miniaturized they were able to to pack a lot into these small packages and so you can think of you know imagine what what your phone can do in terms of computing you could actually fit a few of those inside of a satellite and so a lot of uh, you know similar types of components go into cubesats and um, and they've been able to do a lot of different science missions technology demonstrations uh, some cubesats have have uh, have flown past Mars and provided uh, communication back to the Earth for one of the Mars landers. We have a number of them that are that are um, that the agency is getting ready to send uh, to the moon and, and beyond on the Artemis one mission. And uh, so so they've, they've really um, there, there's a lot that, that can be done. There's there's uh, there's Earth science uh, that can be performed. Uh, space environment measuring the you know the bits of 
of um, you know charged particles and the magnetosphere uh, around the Earth. So they they can be used to gather a, a lot of information in space because you can actually deploy you know a, a number of them for the cost that it might take to to deploy just one bigger satellite. Yeah. So yeah. How, what what are the what are the kind of the parameters for what you want to do up there or are there parameters or rules for what you want to do up there right is there like if I came up with Duna and I came up with one of these cubes uh nano cubes yeah. we might want to do something a little bit weird up there and you guys would be like I don't think so you know I mean <laughs> is there any, can we can we can we get nefarious up there or what what's going on what what are the rules So no no nefarious acts you know are, yeah. are allowed but but this gives me an op excellent opportunity to, you know, just basically state that we do have a call for proposals that are coming out on August 8th. It's going to be released. You can check out our website. Um, if you just Google um, CubeSat Launch Initiative, um, NASA's CubeSat Launch Initiative, you're going to see the website there. You can kind of really learn more about the initiative and what we're going to do. But but your question's a good one, right? So you would actually come up with an idea. You would you know, put your idea through an internal review that, that so that shows that this is something that NASA would be interested in. This is something that would actually benefit benefit NASA in terms of science, or or it's going to benefit a community or a nonprofit organization like the Planetary Society and building awareness and building science outreach. And then you would also then conduct something we call a feasibility review, right? Where where they look at your technical details of your satellite, and then you actually have to outbrief those results in your report that you actually submit them with your proposal. And then we have a board of individuals from across NASA that actually review your proposal, and then they make their selections, say, about March of every year for, for actually to be actually be able to be included inside the CubeSat Launch Initiative. So there is a screening process. Um, and then not only that, but once you get past that gate, you know, we do have, you know, standards and rules and quote unquote regulations that you do have to meet depending on your launch environment, where you're going, if you're going to the International Space Station to deploy your CubeSat. You know, they have a typically more rigorous requirements because there are human beings there, right? We don't want our CubeSats there um, being a danger to those individuals, those astronauts mm -hmm. on station and causing a problem there. You also have, you know, space situational awareness concerns. As you know, there's a lot of things kind of flying up there in space. We want to make sure that we know where everything is, that we don't cause any more debris and that sort of thing. So, so there, are, there are definitely some rules. Um, but yeah, but in the most part, you come up with a good idea, you propose it, and you never know what could happen. But Norman, I was watching this uh, this really high caliber movie called Geostorm, and in that they've launched a bunch of like satellites up, and they were controlling the weather. This this isn't anything like that, is it? How accurate was that movie? Um, let's see. I would give that an accuracy rating of probably about zero. Um, so uh, yeah, so no, we are not trying to control the weather with satellites, but what oh, we are trying on. to do. We are trying. What we are trying to do is we are actually trying to learn more about our weather and learn more about the Earth. We have a saying here at NASA that we launch from Earth for Earth, right? So the majority of our satellites, not just CubeSats, this includes our GOES missions, our JPS, our Joint Polar um, Satellite Survey missions that we do in partner with NOAA. A lot of those missions actually do um, are studying the weather, studying hurricane prediction, providing um, information on droughts, wildfires, information on tornadoes. And, and CubeSats are actually doing some of the same thing. A CubeSat we just launched on the last SpaceX launch, Beaver Cube, which was developed by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in conjunction with NASA Ames. They actually put that satellite up there to study weather patterns, right? And they actually did it in such a small CubeSat, cube size um, form factor. And it was amazing the amount of work and dedication the students actually put in there to get that that um, that satellite up and running and to get that data down to us. Now, wow. Liam, he keeps saying launched up there. How do these get up there? Is it is it in a traditional launch? So, so traditionally, they um, they would be secondary payloads on existing existing rockets that had excess capacity, and you could imagine, you know, you've got maybe extra thirty kilograms on a rocket. You can you can fit. CubeSat dispenser. So that's that was the original path. Um, then then we started seeing them. Uh, there's there's basically a pipeline to include them in cargo cargo missions to the space station. So they go up as you know as, as almost like luggage <laughs> um, on on those those cargo missions, and um, and they'll actually be be. Uh, the, they'll be taken out outside of the of the um, the ISS of the outside of the space station uh, through an airlock, and the robotic arm will will point them 
and deploy them into their into their own orbit. Uh, but but also recently we've been seeing a lot of growth in the small rocket sector. So a lot of uh, a lot of up and coming rocket companies uh, are are providing uh, sometimes even dedicated dedicated launches for the small satellites. And so that that allows us access to rather than waiting for for a um, a launch that goes to an acceptable orbit, that actually allows us to pick our orbit and have a dedicated launch. So especially in cases where we have a, a very specific place that we want to send the spacecraft, um, that gives us a lot of capability. Mm, it does. Now, Norman, you 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 mentioned uh, that there was a lot of things flying up uh, around in space, mm. and I think we talked to a company like a couple of years ago called like like Space Sweepers or something like oh, that. Oh yeah, they space were, like, junk like space junk cleaners. Yeah, yeah, there were like space junk cleaners up there. Uh, but but anyways, how how does how does that managed uh, across uh, private and government sectors and uh, and specifically other governments that may or may not be so friendly with the with the US and what and what NASA is doing uh, as far as you know where you're putting those satellites and and how to manage those in case you know in the case of Artemis you're trying to get to the moon or just debris and traffic right yeah so I mean that's a that's a that's a really great question and um, the, the short answer to that question is there is no there is no one <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. there is there is no governing body that really can tell you, um, if you are a private company, what you can and cannot put up there. Now there are in, now the FCC, they do step in, um, believe it or not, they do step in and they do say, yeah, you wanting to do X, Y, and Z in space, that's not in the public's interest. Um, and they can deny you a license. Mm -hmm. But as far as NASA telling, NASA is not a regulatory agency. We are right. a research and development agency. So it's not our place to tell people what they can and cannot do, but we do try to set standards and set norms so that people can actually follow us. There is um, the Outer Space Treaty that was signed, I believe, in the 60s. There's like Article 5 in there that a lot of people do try to point to to say that, hey, you know, you should do, if you're going to do something in space, you should make sure you're doing it for peaceful purposes. But um, the enforcement mechanism on that is very, very nil to almost zero, um, unfortunately. So, it is kind of the Wild West, unfortunately, but we are trying to instill some rules. Um, there, there is the, um, the Space Force does a great job, actually, of tracking all the objects up there. Um, but as far as someone telling you you cannot go to this area of space or you cannot maneuver at this time, there is no one that really can do that. We just always just try to be good neighbors and coordinate with whoever's up there um, so that we don't run into each other or cause any more debris. Gotcha. Yeah. But we're still human, so I think the natural evolution is eventually Star Wars, right, Michael Vincent? I mean, yeah, I think it's you're going to be. You know, it's, it really, yeah. there's a movie called, there's a show called uh, For All it's Mankind, beginning. and they kind of depict like a more realistic version of how a battle for space in space would uh, actually work. It's really, really. If you have Apple yeah. TV, check that one out. Apple TV Plus. Yeah, well, I, I got to ask you guys, then. So, what does this? What does the success of this mean for other initiatives, bringing other cargo up to space, and moving forward? Yeah. So the uh, yeah. So the the uh, the spacecraft that that we see, a lot of them are are really uh, demonstrating technologies that you might see used on other small satellites, but they might also be used on on larger satellites and demonstrating things like laser communication or or uh, new propulsion techniques. Or uh, there's been some some satellites that uh, that demonstrate uh, solar sails. And so that's you know the ability to use the the solar pressure from the sun to to get around without actually bringing fuel around. So you could imagine if if you could transport cargo without burning any fuel, that's that's a really uh, beneficial thing, especially if you're trying to go a long way. So uh, definitely, technology demonstration uh, will will have a, a big impact in you know cargo transportation in space and also utilization of resources so uh, one of the satellites that that we launched on a previous mission uh, demonstrated ma material that had been 3d printed in space and so you could imagine utilization of maybe material you might find on an asteroid that you could 3d print in space and and build the the structures that you need out there 
Well, you know, it was, a, it was big news for NASA and the team yesterday with the CHIPS Act and what's going for Artemis and the moon. So it sounds like if this goes through, you're going to have the funding you need for all these uh, exciting projects. I love to hear about them. And I think, I mean, look, even the way they're talking about like carriers and there's some dedicated, it, sure. like, we're humans. It's not that different than we move freight on the ground. It's just going up to space. It's yeah. a lot more complicated. It takes a lot more uh, fuel to get up there. But yeah. it's still the same concepts. Logistics are logistics. You have to get things from point A to point B. And NASA are masters of logistics. I guess, Norman, we'll end on you. Before we let you go, what is the next most exciting thing we can look forward to in this space? Oh, wow, that's a great question. So the most exciting thing that we can look forward to is that we have another Ilana mission, which is um, the educated launch of Nano Satellites mission. That's what we call in the initiative when we group a group of these CubeSats together and we actually launch them. Our next launch is actually coming up pretty soon. It's going to be here on the next possibly the next SpaceX launch, which is gonna be in mid-October, so keep an eye out for that. We have about seven different CubeSats on that mission, and they're launching from a, a whole host of different partners that we've been partnering with. We have NASA centers on board, we have universities, and we also have some, um, some believe it or not, um, some high school. A high school is actually launching a CubeSat on there. So we have a lot of really cool things on there. And just to piggyback on what Liam said, um, the really cool part about these CubeSats is that they are a cost-effective way for NASA really to try out the technologies we're going to need to make us a um, interplanetary uh, species, right? Rather than spend, you know, the billions of dollars on X, Y, or Z to perfect this technology, and you're not even sure if it's going to work, you can actually put it or miniaturize it on a CubeSat, and you actually can launch it for, for pennies on the dollar, really, it's a rounding error in the federal budget. And you actually can develop that technology and use that technology at, as it matures on a higher cost mission. So we have a lot of exciting missions. We have, we've launched 148 missions since this initiative has been in, in, in uh, 148 cubes, excuse me, since this initiative has been in, in place. And so the best is yet to come. So just stay tuned. Now you said a high school before I let you go. I got now you got me even more curious. If I wanted, uh, like my sons, they're, they're in school. If I wanted their school, like can they, can a school apply for this? Like if they want to do like a science project oh, yeah. this way? Yeah. Where do I send wow, them? Wow, where do they go? We've launched, so I would say go just, I don't have the website handy, unfortunately, because okay. it's- Wait, where they can go, just Google like NASA CubeSat. Yeah, Google NASA CubeSat launch initiative. Um, we're the government, all of our websites are super, super long, so my apologies there. <laughs> but um, if you go to the NASA CubeSat launch initiative, you Google that, you can actually see where we've launched CubeSats from, and you can actually read about the proposal. And there's actually some, some, actually some um, handy, handy tools to actually help you with your CubeSat development. And so forth. We've launched uh, CubeSats for um, even a middle school. So um, this well, is my kids a, are in elementary school. So maybe maybe I can get them to be the first elementary school. We <laughs> want to start working on this, Norman. Yeah, we got to get the kids young, yeah, right? Yeah, you you got to start young. Students involved as well. So Amen. yeah, Amen. Yeah. Well, hey, guys, Love thank it. you, thank you for your time today. Thank you for your great answers. Have a great weekend, and best of luck with the program. And I hope that echoes through too, because we'd like to see this Artemis mission get up there. Heck yeah! All right, thank you. Take All care. Right, thanks thank for having you. us. Man, I love it. That's very cool. And that's a great question that you had. Yeah. Getting your schools in, involved, right? Yeah, they said high school, you know? And, yeah. like, elementary school, like, maybe they're not going to come up with, like, the finer details, but students could, like, elementary school kids could learn a lot from the science of, like, what kind of things are measured out there, and it can normalize words like biosphere and, and things like oh, that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. People, like, always have this misinterpretation with kids, like, oh, they're too young to know this word, oh, no, no, or they're that's, too young to be taught. That's, that's complete and other BS. You're just not a good teacher. That's exactly right. You're 100% right. All right. It's Friday. Good news, bad news. Hope they're okay. All right, good news. Your garden is looking great this summer. Bad news. This groundhog agrees. Look at this guy. I don't know. I, I think my wife would love this guy. <laughs> Look at him. I think He's I awesome. would too. I, I don't have like a garden. I, I love his flex that he does in front of the camera. Is that I Phil? like his boldness here. Um, I like that he shows the teeth a little bit. Is I that would, punks and Tony Phil? I would put food out for him, wouldn't you? I, I would I would certainly um, not shoo this guy away. I think he's I think he's awesome. Well, man. it looks like his friends though. Oh yeah, look at this guy. Is yeah, but what if he invites the whole neighborhood? <laughs> 
Oh, look. Uh oh. Now you got a problem. Yeah, and See, then like if the video keeps going, the issue. third and the fourth and a fifth. Yeah, this yeah. is the issue, man. And they want to start launching yeah, cute yeah, cats. Yeah. Then you got to have. Then there's people out there trying to call the herd and yeah. all that other kind of. And stuff. then they think they have like uh, you know, the eminent. Did they live there long enough? They um. Eminent domain. Yeah. Is that what you were talking about? I don't know. What is it when you live with someone? I forget the term. When you live with someone for long enough, and it's like, oh, okay, you're 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 together. Yeah, um, marriage. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, common law. You, yes. No. Some, I, I forget. The term. I don't it know. doesn't matter. Someone it out there. Doesn't matter. Yes. Yeah. If you take it, yeah, I know exactly. Hey, I got some good news for you, yeah. my friend. It's a nice, beautiful day, and there's a clear dock. A wow. delivery location wow. is perfect. No wait. Clear, perfect. open, no wait time. You're in. Bad news. It's this dock. <laughs> wow! I mean, see the rain, the, the, the train tracks coming through here. But uh, I can't, there's even better news, though, to this. What is it? And if you have it, because we've severely underestimated the good news here. Uh, if you're that shipper, yeah, it's a swift driver. He doesn't care where he parks. No, he doesn't. And <laughs> so he's gonna park right. In and front what of you're looking, the audio listeners, <laughs> what we're looking at here is a uh, swift truck um, backed <laughs> up to a dock that is on uh, on train tracks. I don't, yes. know, I don't know if those train tracks are in service or not, but it'd be really disconcerting. It's like, what are your it'll, delivery it'll, hours? <laughs> What's the train schedule? That's, I don't know. This just but seems like saying. an accident waiting to happen. If you're the shipper, the great news is you booked Swift and they don't care. They're going to park there anyway. They're going to park there anywhere? <laughs> They're going to park there anyway. They don't care. <laughs> here's uh, here is some uh, what here's some good news. <laughs> Pickleball is taking off across North oh, America. Come on, man. Here's some bad news. Pickleball no. is taking off across North wow. America. Oh, God. This is, oh, this, we got a lot on this. We haven't talked about Pickleball in about a month, and a lot's happened since. Now, my microphone's working. Do we got the pickleball sounds going in the back? Yeah. Oh, it, nice. it, is that people, like, okay. are, are those the balls or people's <gasps> knees breaking? No, so we wanted this to be immersive so you can understand what it sounds like to live by pickleball. But, so after the uh, the Vancouver Sun reports that after a pop-up pickleball program was announced in February, a change.org petition started by an, an anonymous quiet tennis player set out to stop public tennis courts from being eliminated and suggested local pickleball players were an invasive species to the community taking over their courts and seizing them for their own uh, pickleball. And it says uh, they've made claims that the tennis community in Vancouver is dwindling, elitist, entitled, and that tennis courts are empty and surplus. There's a, th I mean, the feud doesn't end there. The, the tennis players in Vancouver, they really hate these pickleballers. This, this one guy, he says, uh, there's 60 to 70,000 recreational tennis players in the lower Midland compared to what estimates to about 7,800 pickleball players. Yeah, so they could take them in a brawl. That's what they're saying. Yeah, hey, this man, guy watch out. We got way more people. Well, they're huge. They're, they're wicked huge gatekeepers, these, these people. So, like, this guy, Martin, he goes, pickleball is a great sport for tennis players that are injured or aging out of the sport. Couldn't See agree more. See how he more. looks down upon Could it? Could not agree more. GQ says the only thing moving faster than the venture capital back market, although is that really moving that fast right now, GQ? It's already <laughs> <almost> pretty desperate. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, is the rush in pickleball haters. Pickleball skeptic Chris Black says Thank pickleball God. is the kale of sports. He's right. And added, to me, pickleball is, uh, are more of a hobby than a sport. It's a fidget spinner that requires more work. You are Dead on accurate. Guys. Dead on accurate. Why? Well, it'd be, it's, they're just a bunch of goats that are, I mean, they're or sheep uh, running around going pickleball. There, there's people making money off your ass. Yeah. The tennis players are correct, man. Now, all this bad mouthing of tennis players and their elitists and all this kind of stuff is baloney. If you're a pickleballer, go get your own damn court. I'm getting used to the sound. It's uh, like a metronome. Uh, yeah, see? You're getting sucked into this whole thing. No. You're going to have a bunch okay. of old people who can't play no, no, sports, no, breaking no, no. knees I'll and blowing out ankles. I'll tell you what sucked me in. It's the elite. They are right. You, that guy, a tennis player, like, do you think we're elitist in title? No. What do you think this is? You're gatekeeping here. You're saying that, oh, it's for old and injured people. You're saying that it's kale. You're saying it's a fidget spinner. You're saying it's a fad. Maybe tennis is a fad. Why don't you get back on your courts out there, tennis players? And also, some of these tennis players are court over. It's, it's unbelievable what some of these tennis players will say. Some of them get were like, your own court, pick a ballers. Oh. I I think a few people are going to get really rich and then it'll be get regulated to remember when people talked about this He's extremely right. uh, dorky thing. This magazine racket, I guess it's a tennis magazine, they are really pissed about this. They said the media bought into it and it's overshadowing shadowing a very cool moment that tennis is having. I it's, don't know what cool Dude, it's a slippery slope that you're going down and they're 100% right. You're going to have all this crap. You know what it's made out of? Probably Polypropylene and plastic balls and all this kind of, kind of crap. It's already sucked in Leonardo DiCaprio who's done 
more for the environment than arguably anybody else Tennis on earth. Tennis balls He's for the even doing it. Tennis He's polluting balls for the, the earth Pickleball Pickleballers balls. must be stopped for the pickleball. Now, you got to understand, you are in the demographic of a pickleball player. The average age is 43.5. But that I'm an athlete. I could play pickleball, ago. and I would be responsible with it. I'd be responsible. You shouldn't be doing this. You can have a whole bunch of people lined up in the emergency room with blown out knees and ankles who shouldn't be playing sports at all because they think that they're an athlete because they can hit a little plastic ball. All these things are going to get into the ocean. It's going to kill fish and everything else. Well, Bad move. Choke on it. And you can stick it, tennis ball players, because <laughs> other pickle... Do you know there's pickleball celebrities now? You got a... Uh, Nick Foles is not the Philadelphia Eagles quarterback. Is he the Eagles quarterback? I don't know who the heck he is, but I'm telling you, it's even captured Leonardo DiCaprio, who is a huge environmentalist and does great yeah. things for this earth. Bill and Gates. he's a pickleballer. They've sucked him in. It's a bad movement. End it now. Reese Witherspoon, Russell Wilson. Yeah. Kim Kardashian. Yeah, oh, those are great spokesmen. You're not making a solid argument for pickleball with those names. All right. One last <laughs> scary story. i got to find out which one are you going to eliminate. Which one out there? Fall isn't that far away, and Halloween is right around the corner. Hershey's warm. Warning that they will not have enough Halloween candy. You gotta <laughs> yeah, eliminate right. one bar. Hershey, peanut butter cups, Kit Kat, Almond Joy. What you doing? Almond Joy, gone. Bye. Nah, Hershey yeah. bar. Regular Hershey chocolate, no good, no point. I'll get it out of my face. Save the Kit Kat, that's all I'm saying, bro. Yeah, the Kit Kat Do not get rid of the peanut butter cup or the Kit Kat. Almond Joy is very polarizing. Put this online. Almost everybody picked uh, Almond Joy. Yeah, they did. Yeah. They Final Almond Joy. Anyways, find us on Twitter at Timothy Dooner. Find him at Vincent the Dune. Look up What the Truck wherever you get your podcast. Hey, freight brokers. Thai TMS has helped my brokerage increase revenue and scale to a whole new level. If your brokerage is also 